You see Marin as a wallpaper, you know Zeos is listening to something good. Yeah, and that's that's white noise, by the way. Um So, sitting here before you is a switch box, which was made possible by uh, Skedra, who is Viking Weave Cables, and Golden One, who is the guy who debunked MQA pretty violently on YouTube. And um, uh, Skedra builds cables and built this switch box, and the Golden One is Measurement Freak, and he measured it to make sure that, you know, via this stupidity that is these wires and the switch being used and everything else, that it would be 100% zero loss, like undetect, non-measurable, which is what it is. And what it does is it switches between three things. I'm currently using only two because I have here the soon to be released, uh, I think March 30th, APOS will have it. Um, ESS dual DAC version of the Fio K9. That's the Fio K9. Love that thing. Love it. Love it. Everyone loves it. No one dislikes the Fio K9. But I've been lucky enough to get this one, which hasn't come out yet, to give a listen and compare. Because here's the thing. If they made an AKM version, AKM is the DAC manufacturer. The AKM is Japanese. Uh, Sabre is American, actually. California. Um, if they were the same price, this wouldn't be an issue. I wouldn't even bother with another video. But they want to charge $150 more for this one. And besides going with the gold, there's a couple other almost physical. Right, this. It comes with a plastic seat that goes on the side that, that's perfectly fitted for the And it's a slightly angled and you, you, you put your, there's already a sticker, you put it here and you go like that. And all of a sudden it does feel more expensive. Just, just going to point that out. Um, by the way, this video is sponsored by absolutely nobody yet, but we're getting there. We're going to have sponsors in this channel. It's going to be amazing. You're not going to see any difference though, because most of that's going to go to pay for my driveway. Um, but now again, Marin wallpaper, we've got, if you didn't see who that was, more blondes because gold, 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 silver. Okay, silver, gold. So wanted to get really much more uh, judicial with this because I could just put this on the desk and be like, hey, it's here's the thing and it sounds pretty good. But I wanted to know why, why $150 more? What benefits? I mean, uh, APOS actually did a really good write-up comparing. Let me take this off for P-Track before I lose my mind. Uh, APOS does a really good job comparing the two from what they've tested and measured. Apparently, this one is 50 grams lighter. So, double the amount of DAX goes from an AKM to a Sabre. So, you have two DAX, and it loses 50 grams. So, it's like a GT3 RS version of a Porsche. So, there you go. Um, it gains a little bit of power. At 32 ohms, it's 2100 milliamps, milliwatts, my bad, milliwatts versus 2000. So a tenth of a watt more powerful. And uh, what's the difference between at 300 ohms? Uh, it's the same. Seven, eight. Oh, it goes from 278 milliwatts to 281 milliwatts. So nothing really to write home about. It does have an extra digital filter. Now it'll do seven kinds instead of six. There's one extra peak volts out the back. It's, 50, no, it's 51 VPP versus 52 VPP. Uh, the total amount of distortion plus noise is actually better on the ESS, probably due to the fact that there's two DACs. And the signal to noise ratio goes up by six decibels or down by six decibels. It goes from 123 um, dB to 129 dB. And basically what APOS says is usually what I say at the end of the day, um, blah, 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 it's a little bit lighter, louder, and more powerful, less noisy. There is um, the noise floor issue on the high gain, which has been sorted out more with this. Although again, if you're using super sensitive IEMs, that was never really a problem. But what they said at the end of this, uh, end of the day, that rest assured the ESS version is in every way similar to or better than the original AKM version. But let me tell you about how it sounds, which is very strange for Zeos to get into, because Zeos doesn't know how things sound. Fuck, what a fucking idiot. Um, whipped out the Stellias, which are Focals. I think they're still their closed flagship. Not counting the ones that are covered in diamonds. That's 
That is bullshit, not flagship. There's a difference. Um, let's get off of that and get to actual music. I've used a uh, actual sound pressure meter. I put it in the headphone cup, and I switched and then adjusted to make them exactly the same. And I've sat here for what feels like 15 hours, and it's been more like an hour and a half. Trying different headphones. I'm going to leave just two on the desk, and I'm going to probably pause and disconnect all this, but more waifus is better. Um, main difference, real early in the video, thank you for supporting me on Patreon and subscribe, sir. The, the main difference is the ESS version moves the sound wider, and there's like a warmth to it. Uh, just, I mean, like, you got to understand, we were looking at THX amps, both of these. So I don't think the THX amplifiers themselves have changed. What they've changed is the DACs. So that means because we have two DACs instead of one DAC, you know what I should have tested? I should have gotten the kilowatt out and see if it draws a little bit more power. I doubt you'll be able to measure it. It's probably a minuscule amount more power. Because since we have dual DACs, the reason that it's a tenth of a watt more is because the amplifiers in the background aren't being fed, you know, 1.78 uh, volts. They're probably being sent 1.84 volts. So individual DACs, a little bit higher voltage output to the amps that are exactly the same. So if the amps are the same, we're actually here listening to the difference in DACs, which I've said multiple fucking times doesn't really make a difference. That said, there's a bit of a difference, and I like this one. Not denoting that, but wider, warmer, and on for some fucking reason white noise, which if you don't know what white noise is, it's basically the high end of the spectrum. On the high end of the spectrum, this sounds clearer. Does that make sense? Clearer, more-er, more energy. I want to use bad words. I want to use terrible fucking, oh, the low end girth is thick. I, I can't deny the love I gave to the K9 Pro. That's it. It's right there. That version's out. If you bought it, you're happy. Be fucking happy. Don't, don't be this. Stop watching this video. The new ESS version brings just the smallest little, little adjust. It sounds like the sound goes from like, right here, like, like a little bit balled up in your face. I'm using uh, Coaxial Digital, by the way, to both of these. From the Singer SU6 audio bridge, so that thing is just perfectly giving me spitif. And the sound goes from the normal AKM of like, here's where music's playing, to like there on the ESS. It just, it just sort of puts it down and away. And you just get a little bit more open sound. I fucking hate this review already because it's making me sound like a crazy person. Um, I knew this kind of already before I hooked up the switch box before I, I should name you. What should I name you? What should I name this? The crazy purple octopus. Isn't there a purple octopus in a hentai or something that's super famous? Um, hooking this up and being able to actually just go one, Two, which I can't blind test myself because I, I know which one I plugged it into. But going back and forth with the exact same volumes and levels, ha, just, I was sitting here and if I turned it to that, I was listening on Stelia's or the T60RP Argons, I was just enjoying the hell out of it. I switched it over and went, am I still enjoying it? Is it different? Is it better? Do I like this more? By the way, you like how they made it so that I can plug a uh, heart heart audio cables instead of using the adapter i could just plug those straight in that is so cool <sighs> and this is a type of like minute fucking minuscule mini squirrel this is the tiniest little change that drives audio files crazy this is why audio files are crazy. This is it. Because they detect something, if they manage to get like a, a certified AB rig and they get two of the same thing with the slightest change, I mean, it's $150 more. It had better do some shit more. 
the ESS DAX, having two of them, it's going to add to the cost. It's going to add. So why are you paying for it? And this is why you're paying for it. You pay for it because it takes the sound from here and makes it go here. Just, just like, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to tell you this in like a way that if you've never seen one of my reviews, and you got to think about this. There's always a review that is the first someone Z reviews, and this is just some weird wee mofo pointing with his hands, and I can't see his face. And I'm trying to describe, but what I'm trying to do, newcomer, hello, new new chatter, is describe the difference between a $700 uh, DAC amp combo from a company called Fio to an $850 DAC amp combo from a company called Fio. That all they've changed is go from a single chip that is, does the digital to analog conversion to two chips that do the digital analog conversion and then they made everything gold oh, i do like I, w I was like oh, okay the silver knob is fine the gold knob just the the gold knob i don't know what it is about the gold knob but the gold knob fucking works and you could run it you know normally like that but this thing how oh it comes with um five feet i should point that out the box is somewhere around here it came with five feet because you can put four feet on the bottom or or four feet on the bottom and a fifth foot on the side so you could put it there you'd obviously want it in this orientation so the wires are low switches are high and the usb in that's a USB C would stay on top and accessible um i did it come with that as well i don't remember if this this rubberized voltage switch there's a, there's a rubber cap here that was in the packaging because when this unit shipped to me, it was 220 volts. It was set to 220. And I had to go in there and flip the switch to 110 and then put the cap in, which might be the case for all. There's a huge piece of paper that comes with both of these amps that's like, look, I think it might be set to 220 because I think they know who they sell more to and it's more overseas European stuff. So just double check before you plug it in and do bad things. So now... Everything else is the same. Uh, if you didn't see my review, which I should probably hold on, I'm gonna I'm gonna unplug this giant fucking thing. I'm gonna slide you forward, um, and we'll give an actual unit tour in case you didn't watch it. And again, this is someone's first C reviews. This is a big, heavy, eight hundred and fifty dollar uh, DAC amp combo. If you just have an amp, just have an amplifier. Do I have any amp? Just, that's just an amplifier. These are just amplifiers. Then you need to have your signal go from digital, convert it into something that an amplifier can amplify, and that usually is done on a DAC. Every phone, if it has a headphone jack, has a DAC built in because it converts and then it amplifies. Those are all separate, completely you know, owned DACs, and these are all amps, and this has them both. I'm talking to the, the new guys. Relax. you got to pretend there's new guys. So this box... You plug in to your computer either USB or fiber optic, or in this case, I have a coaxial digital. You plug in power. The back of the unit, because I'm gonna give, the, I'm giving this obviously a full review. <sighs> Ma'am, you are you are hardly dressed. Could you please hide for a second? We've got power plug, master on off switch. Even though you can soft off in the front, Bluetooth antenna is not connected. USB. Here's your optical thing with a little cap. Here's our coaxial digital with a Liberty cable, which I've had for years. Then you've got silicone caps over both the line in, so you could feed this from another DAC and in. That would be a new, good way to test it. And then line out RCA and then balanced out XLRs for powered monitors or any sort of professional mixing device, along with a 4.4 in, which I could also feed it with another DAC to verify, because then that should be... If I fed both of these units with identical DAX, the sound should be identical. I don't have that ability to do that. It's one thing I don't have is matching DAX. I do have R2R Musician Pegasus, but all their voltages are off, so it changes everything. Anyway, there's the rear. Uh, the front is a capable um, four-pin XLR, a quarter-inch and a 4.4 Pentacon. We'll uncap that because I'm using it for the big switchy box. We've got, actually, no, cap it again. No, leave it uncapped. It's fine. We've got five LEDs, which are written with text underneath. I'll give the exact same, basically, statement I said in the original review of the K9. I wish this text was more contrasty to the unit. Now that we're in 4K on these 4.3 videos, 
by the way, you could see more of the wall. I couldn't use Marin, a full length Marin, unless this was a sound demo. So going 4.3 allows me to use taller wallpapers. You got to really think about the, the fine details and see your views and his choices when he makes thing, things happen. Why is he doing it? Is he doing it for the waifus? Yeah. Yeah, he is. Um, USB optical coax with line and Bluetooth. When you switch with the input button here, it moves over. So you can see kind of where it is. You just can't read what the fuck it is. You have very small buttons down here. A power button, which doubles as a mute. You press it. That goes off because it's muted. Unmuted, then you hold it down. This is an RGB ring, which uh, goes with the... Where it's currently set, if you do it in the app I showed you on the previous video, I'm not going to do it again. You can set that to be the color of the input quality of your connection. So that's perfectly fine. Um, your gain is low, medium, high, which does a very cool, like, slow rise every time you change it. Nice and soft. Uh, the output choices are headphone, um, pre-out, so the stuff in the back can be adjusted with the volume knob, and then straight DAC. It's another thing I could do. I could use a straight DAC out into a different amp. If only I had... In fact, you know what? When I do that Ferrum, I might use this as the DAC and just just try it so I look forward to the ferrum review soon um because i was going to use that smsl do 200 for it like i'm currently using but maybe i'll try this anyway so there's your switches they're real small and it's kind of hard to control them it's hard to control them when they're laying flat when you use the angled in converter right there now you look you get a whole finger on there you go one two look this is easy this is easy mode I've got a place to, to control it. I think that's partially the reason they did that. Plus, it takes up so much less room on a desk. Like, I had this thing tucked over here for the last, like, four or five reviews I was doing. Where I feel like that takes up a lot. And, like, you don't need it. The, the thing is wide enough, it'll just stand up on its own. And you could 3D print this. I'm sure someone will. But it's got a nice rubber pad on it. That's your rubber feet and a rubber pad. You're just going to get that perfect angle. So you know the length. And I think you have to put it... You could feel there's like a perfect spot, like right there, like a half inch back. And that's where it was designed to sit. That's how, oh, and then the USB in on the side is another USB in that's USB C. So you can go USB C to USB C to your phone, or there you go, or USB C to lightning if you're dumb. Um, I ruined the volume now. So now, now, it's, now we're fucked. Let's plug in the T60 RPs. Argons, T60 Argons. For those who don't know about this headphone, you know, I think I'm going to treat every video like the first person ever is watching it. These headphones are originally made by Fostex. They're a Japanese company, and they're made of wood, and they're made designed to look like they're plastic ones, and they did all this effort to make them shaped like the wood. Like, it's amazing how much effort went into making wood look like the plastic for no reason. Anyway, um, they're okay, a little bit sharp, like 300 bucks. They are taken by a guy named Ryan, who runs Mod House, actually here in PA. And he rips them apart, and he fills them with clay and padding, and he matches drivers, and he puts on these massive pads, and then he puts on a deer skin comfort thing, and he sells them for way too little money, and they become like a thousand dollar headphone. They should be a thousand dollar headphone. I think he charges four hundred, four twenty, whatever. He should charge way more. Anyway, they become one of the better headphones. Let's put this to high gain now, because we had it on low gain because we were running the Stellias, which are French and gentle. Gentle French. Uh, we can actually... Can I get this thing the fuck off of here? Oh, God, it's... It literally is a tentacle monster. Uh, yeah, and I've attached it to a, a stand because there else is no way to, like... Jesus. It's actually being held up by the wires. Don't get yanked off the table. So now you're here on your lonesome. High gain, volume headphone. Should probably play music. Frankie goes to Hollywood. The other uh, issues that carry over from the uh, AKM to the ESS is the volume knob goes from like zero to 50%, like at the noon point. Assuming that it was laying down, that's noon. So now it's there. And it doesn't really kick off into the, ma the main volume band until you're between like 2 o'clock and 5 o'clock. So it's like, it's okay. It's playing 
We're getting loud. Now we're loud. Now it's real loud. Oh my God. And this is a digital volume knob. So it stops and stops. But if you go real fast, volume doesn't change because it's like, wait, pick where you want to be and then I will set the volume internally. It's not using any relays or anything, but it is, it's an analog knob that controls a digital volume. Like I was doing this, I was flopping this over here, which is now this has to go to high gain and it slowly raises up. And I was like, what am I hearing? What am I hearing that's different? Why am I hearing that this sounds slightly different? And thankfully for that switch box, it just exposed it. And it was like, oh, this is best girl now. Like if I had to sell one, it would be the AKM version because I personally, if you're into very linear, straight, yet not annoying, like th the fact that it was a THX amp yet sounded because here's the thing, I have to sort of re rebuttal my own review of the K9. Because I said it's one of the best sounding THX amplifiers I've ever heard. It's it's not as as linear and boring and stripped out as like the 789. Now, add a little more funk to it, get a little more width, get a little... I can't even call it warmth because I'm pretty sure if you measured it, it would be some sort of like weird thing that wouldn't even come up. But just adding the soundstage and you're not trimming the highs though. I've done testing. I've literally done testing. Yet I just, in, usually my my preferred soundstage is like class A, like the sings are over there. Like soften the fuck out of it. Let me enjoy my music. That's my thing. If you come here for very analytical, precise motions, there's, there's headphones of that, there's amps for that, and there's other people who love that shit. I usually need that about 10% of my life. The rest of my life, I want this. That was way too loud. So, I mean, I can't really tell it's got the 10th of a watt more, but T60 guns need all the power. Yeah, no, this is, this is... This is the 38 special of, of headphone amps and DAX. Yeah, no, we've, we've, we've reached an equilibrium now in my soul where I'm like, okay, $150, I'm, I'm looking that way and looking this way and looking that way and looking this way and look, yeah, I'd pay the $150 more. Doesn't mean you should return your goddamn that, get it, use it, because it's still one of the best sounding THX amps. This, they just did a little bit to it. Patrons chat, $10 a month. Um, they just did a little bit more to it with that ESS swap. That is more than I expected because I've reviewed units that have gone from AKM to ESS, but now we've gone from single AKM to dual ESS. So you're literally separating the DAC into two channels, which I've actually done a whole video on dual DACs like externally. And I thought it made an amazing amount of difference there. Um, here, I'll put this down so we can admire the, the, uh, Bowsette. Bowsette. Remember when Bowsette was a thing? She, she, she's still going strong. That's the weirdest meme. It's the hottest, weirdest meme that has ever been. Um, full endorsement of the ES... Basically, Zeos timestamp to this moment. Full endorsement of the ESS K9 Pro. i not sure if they intended actually on having two versions or if they started designing and building them with the AKM DAC before the fire, because there's a fire in Japan that burned down the factory that made all the high-end DAC chips. And that was like a year ago plus. So I think they, they've they at least gotten close to recovery on that because it was one factory that made the good ones, the high-end ones. So I don't know why there are still two of them. Did they want to charge $150 more? Did they Do they have a bunch of those DAC chips and they're just going to charge less for them? I'm sure the ESSs are harder to implement because they have two of them. They're doing more internally with it. I don't know why there's two. Because it's not like this was released eight months ago. I only just did the review of this like three weeks ago. And now I've got an advanced version of this, so I'm about a month ahead of time. But that's less than two months to have one version and another version. And again, if they were the same price, it'd be like, well, pick whichever brand you like. But they're charging you $150 more. They're definitely putting the gold trim on the knob. They're trying to tell you this is the premium version. And...
And they're both pretty fucking high-end products. So why wouldn't you just not make the AKM one and only make this or not make this if you have a bunch of those chips and just make that? I'm not against it. It's just confusing in the timeline. If next year this came out, that would make more sense. It's, they're sort of stepping on their own toes. It's like, you, you just brought this out. Everyone on the earth fell in love with it. And now you're telling everyone on the earth, that, by the way, for $150 more, dual DAC one. And I'm just like, I guess that's that's 100% true. So links to this in the description. Links to that one. And the, actually, they're the same link. You, you pick one. This one will not be out till March 30th. And that one's out everywhere you want to buy it. Link to Funnel Audio. I want to thank them again for sending me the Stellias and never asking for them back. It's a $3,000 headphone. Funnel Audio gets a fucking... Funnel Audio is sponsored. Thank you. I don't know where you are. I haven't spoke to them in like two and a half years. Thumbs up to you guys. Marin Wallpaper. I've already downloaded it. You know, if you bother if you're new on Zero Reviews. Again, we're assuming people are new here. I link every wallpaper in the description. And if you want every wallpaper I've ever used, and to get the wallpapers immediately when I swap them on my computer here, you can join the Roselio Sync Horde um, and get them like that. Because you should be able to look up the original artists with Sauce Now or IQDB and support them directly. I th do I support that artist? There's a bunch of them on Pixiv I support. Um, that's a good wallpaper. Anyway. Links, links, links. Sponsorships are coming. If you'd like to sponsor my channel, um, I will say your shit in the beginning. I think I, I tell people it's 20 to 40 seconds because God knows how long I'm going to talk about a sponsor. I could, it could be four minutes. I'm Zeos. Um, but in the, th in the first three minutes, because you want to get people going on the review first. You don't want to do it at the very start. You want to be like, oh, by the way, this is a sponsor because you're already here. And then uh, priority link placement. I, I want to get sponsored by hot sauce companies and pepper companies and not VPNs and not fucking mobile games. I, although if I do a Raid Shadow Legends one, you people have to get on board. You got to get on board with that and just be like, oh, Zeos, yes, I totally play Raid Shadow Legends. <laughs> I did a stream for them. I made $500 streaming Nor Raid Shadow Legends. And by streaming it, I meant I literally shit talked it for two out for four hours. Forever. The game is terrible. You, I hit, you hit a button and then it just does its thing and it's done and you hit the button again. I sat to doing that for three hours. Anyway, I'm done. If you like this channel, if you like this sort of content, I am supported mostly by viewers like you with uh, Patreon and Subscribestar. You get to see these reviews early, participate in yard sales. So if one of these canines, if one of these canines end up in a yard sale, which I got to see because Apo sent me that one, um... It'll be from the 1st to the 10th of every month. If you're a $5 patron or subscribe star subscriber, you get to click a link and bid on any items. I usually put about 10 items in the yard sale every month. And at the end of the 10 days or on the 10th, the highest bid, which is blind and silent auction, will get emailed and invoiced. If you live in America or Canada, I ship to you for free. So whatever you bid is what you pay. If you live outside the United States and Canada, uh, shipping is half. So if you live in Antarctica, I'll ship it to you. You live in Bangladesh, I'll ship it to you. You're just going to pay half, and I'm going to take a loss. Fucking South Africa. I always South Africa. I think there was one. Poland was weird once. I once shipped to Poland. I probably won't be shipping to Russia, or I would ship to Ukraine if I thought it would get there, but I don't know if I could actually ship to either of those places right now, reliably. So if you're there and you're watching this, I hope you're having a good day, and save your money on things that are not audio equipment, although music is still important. Um, I think I'm going to switch out all the equipment on this desk currently. I'm just getting it off so I can whip out the Rebel Amp. I got the Rebel Amp, I got the Flux Amp, and I got the Tor. Those are, those are three Ukrainian audio products that I should splat, splat, splatter on my desk. Anyway, other than that, the $10 a month uh, patronage and... $10 a month patronage chat, which you heard them I'll get alert from. Uh, that puts you in a behind-the-scenes private Telegram chat, which lets you see what I'm doing early. You get my opinions early. You get my, you get my help. If you just at Zeus Pantera. You also get a swap meet channel access, which you can buy and sell and trade gear. And that's lifetime. You get in that for life. The, the actual patronage chat cycles. And anyone who supports me long enough gets into a lifetime achievement chat. Um, that's it. I have nothing else to say about this beautiful fucking it's kind of it kind of pisses me off because i'm like i just why would you do this to me because now i look like the shithead 
that just praised the fuck out of that. Probably got at least 20, 30 people to buy it. And now they're looking at this going, oh, come on, Zeus. And I'm like, oh, come on, Theo. What are you doing to me? What if the platinum, platinum one came out? What if there was the, the, what if a Texas Instruments DAC one came out with three Texas Instrument DACs? Then what are we going to do? Absolutely nothing, because TI DACs kind of are, are lame. Um, yeah, so anyway, I'm done. I'll see you all in the next one, which is usually two days. And I'll see you on the second channel. I have a second channel where I do, I eat hot sauce and I talk about Roselio Sync. You'll have a link to that. And there's a cooking channel and there's unboxings. If you want to see me unbox these things to give you my actual initial impressions, that's uh, just search Z, Z Unboxing on YouTube. It usually pops up. And I put those out every other night. Or I'm saying pasta puts those out every other night at like 1 a.m. Eastern time. So you get to go to sleep to me yelling about boxes. Anyway, I'm done. Got that thing off there. I'm your host, Zeos Pantera. You can do the things that all the other YouTubers tell you to do, but I never really tell you to do them. But, you know, if you want to, you want to. If you're not, you don't. Fuck it. Bye. <laughs>